Okay then, well the first part is dead easy. We're given this distribution, the normal distribution with a mean of 200 and asked to state what the median is. Well, the median is exactly the same as the mean because the distribution is symmetrical, the median being the middle value. So the median then will be the same as the mean, 200 or 200 grams. Now when it comes on to part B, what I'd want to do is first of all define a random variable. Give the give a letter for the random variable. The question doesn't have a letter in it. So I would say something along these kind of lines. Let X, this is a capital letter for random variables, let X be the random variable weight of the popcorn in grams. Where X is distributed normally with a mean of 200 and then you've got the standard deviation sigma squared, the variance in other words. So I'd then sketch my normal distribution and define this axis along here with a capital X, okay? And whenever I draw a sketch for my random variable I would always draw the standardized normal distribution, Z, directly underneath so I can project my values down onto it. So remember then that this distribution Z, okay, is normal with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Now, we're told that 60% of the weights of popcorn lie between 190 grams and 210 grams. And if I mark that on the graph here, you can see that the 190 is 10 below the 200 and 210 is 10 above. So they're symmetrically placed then about this center line here. So knowing that, okay, let's just mark that line up through there and the line up through there and we could shade the fact that that is 60% in there. So how are we going to work out what sigma is, okay, the standard deviation, knowing that that 60% of values are in here? Well, the tables that we use normally, okay, give us values of z to the right of zero here and they give us areas to the left of that z or on some occasions to the right. So what I would want to do is drop a line down from the 210, we'll just do that as a dotted line. And that's what I mean about drawing this graph below this one. So you can do this kind of thing, project lines on. So we'll call this value Z1 here, okay? And we know two facts now. We know that this section here, just between 0 and Z1, because of the symmetry we've got up here, this shading must be 30%. Okay? We also know that from 0 back down here, that's half the graph, so we've got another 50% shaded down here. So in total then, we've got 80% shaded to the left of Z1. Let's just mark that in as 80%. Or you could obviously say that this area in this direction is 20%. Now how's that going to help us then? Well, next I would want to try and figure out what Z1 is. And I should know that any Z value is equal to the observed value X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation sigma. So how does that translate for this? What that means is therefore Z1 must equal X, the observed value that corresponds to Z1, which is the 210, and then minus mu, mu being the mean 200, and that's all divided by the standard deviation, sigma. The problem is we can't work out sigma until we have Z1. And this is where 
we need to turn to tables. And there's different sets of tables out there. And you should be familiar with your tables. You're going to get some tables where they give you a diagram, something like this, where they shade to the right of Z and they call it P. So this gives us the probability of Z being greater than a particular value of Z equaling P. And if you've got tables like that, they're often called the inverse normal tables, check it out, look up your p-value which is going to be in this case the 20% or as a decimal 0 0.20 or depending on how many decimal places your table gives. You'll look underneath that and you should see somewhere something along the lines 0 0.8416. Or if you haven't got these tables Look for tables like this where they give the area to the left, the probability of Z being less than Z. And if you've got tables like that, you should find that if you look up the probability of Z being less than Z, remember this area would be 80% or 0 0.8000. You're looking for a value that's going to be close to that. And in the tables I was looking at, I found that I got 0 0.7995, which was the closest value I could get to 0 0.8000, okay? So when I look across here, we have Z is 0 0.84. So, so either Z is 0 0.84 from these tables, or a little bit more accurately, 0 0.8416. Either way then, we can say that we know that the probability that x is less than 210 is equal to 0 0.8 and that means that the probability that z is less than z1 okay if we call that z1 that's going to be 0 0.8 and we can see that from tables our z1 value is going to be equal to 0.84 or you could put that version there 0.8416. So if we just come down here now we can use this result instead of Z1 we can just write 0.8416 equals 210 minus 200 which is 10 then divided by Sigma if we rearrange this equation to make sigma the subject, sigma is going to be 10 divided by 0 0.8416. Okay, work that out and what you end up with is 11.8821 and so on. And you could give that say to some degree of accuracy, let's say three significant figures, then it will be 11.9. And if you put the units in, standard deviation would be measured in grams for this question. So that would be 11.9 grams to three significant figures. OK, well I hope that's given you some idea then of how to go about tackling that part of the problem.